So we are back with our episode five of G Pet. Today we are going to talk about another very interesting issue regarding Niger coop. So Professor Kurana, in the Sahel region, there is a coop, or I would say, anti coop in the Niger region. So a lot of Western countries are afraid of it, while it is considered as an opportunity for Russia. What's your insight about it? Thank you very much. I'm glad you have raised this issue. Mm-hmm. Because this issue is very live, mm. and in live issues, there is a way of checking what's happening. There's a live. Um, I mean, if you're not too much attached to the region, it is also like a drama which is happening, mm. and then you are guessing what will happen next and what will exactly. happen next. But even for watching drama, we have to uh, be aware of who the actors are, mm. and who the actresses are, and who. What is the what is who the, is the director what and is, producer? And what is at stake? <laughs> and what is at stake? Right. And who will come to whose help? Uh, and uh, uh, in case of Niger, it has been changing. Hmm. Now let's see whether it is a standalone event or it is an Africa-wide event or it is a actually a global event. Hmm. Uh, I dare say that it is a global event. Okay. Uh, it is not a standalone event. Hmm. <clears throat> there are backgrounds to it. First background to it is colonialism. Hmm. Okay. Now this is the pangs of removing the vestiges of the colonialism. Hmm. Okay. The large number of countries uh, in Africa, which they had just sat and drawn up um, that um, agreement, what was called Munich Agreement, uh, all the colonial parts, and therefore these are all state lines hmm. on Africa map. There's no trade America. Okay. It doesn't follow rivers. It doesn't follow anything. Hmm. Now, while we say the rivers, then Niger, this country, has got the third largest river of of um, Africa. Mm. First one is Nile River, of course, then Congo River, mm. and uh, the Niger River, and uh, it is part of Africa, which is called Western Africa. It is also a region which is called Sahel region, which we hardly discuss in India because we are not aware. Mm. S A H E L, Sahel region, except the military, because many times. Uh, the U.S. peace mission uh, missions in Africa, uh, Indian uh, army is invited to mm. sort it out, and then they not, don't get paid. Fifteen, twenty years, UN forgets to pay them. Mm. So this time they will ask them advance money or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's also a connection. So um, Sahel region is uh, six countries. Uh, they are the least um, per capita income. Okay. Sometimes called sub-Sahara region. Mm. Above that is the Sahara Desert, mm. and below is green area. Okay. Now they are in between, and they are very poor, except for resources. Mm. <clears throat> this is also part of about fifteen countries, which used to be under French. So it was called French Africa. French Africa. French Africa. And uh, the the currency was uh, francs. Mm. Till today, it is even in Niger. Okay. <clears throat> because Niger got freedom in 1980 mm. uh, from France, but everything is managed by French. Okay. The largest thing they manage there is one of the largest factories of yellow cake. Something like we had in India in Goa, Goa region, that they left uh, the Britishers left earlier, but there were colonies still no, going no, no. on. Goa was Portuguese. Portuguese, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's slightly different. Portuguese and Guanese uh, had good relationships because they okay. like that music and wine and everything. Okay, but it's not good in uh, Niger and French. And it, no, there has been a very high level of exploitation. Mm. <clears throat> there was slight difference because the other major power was um, uh, UK, um, British, and uh, then of course everybody had something. Uh, Belgium had uh, what was called Belgium Congo. Now it's called Democratic. Democratic Republic of Congo, hmm. where the number two river go- goes through, and um, Congo is something like eight times, the ten times the size of Belgium hmm. alone. That particular thing. Okay. There was massive exploitation. So that portion, because the people were athletic uh, and so on, they had at least hmm. good food and all that. Uh, they were all part of the slave trade. They okay. became slaves every day. Oh. Uh, French also had slave trade. Hmm. Because it was a profitable trade, so yeah. and in the end, because the British were smarter, they, they probably did more of it. You know? mm. 
they supplied Canada, supplied USA, supplied uh, all the plantations, Mauritius, mm. this, that, so on. So now when I say Mauritius, uh, it's interesting that it was first, first the British, then French defeated them, they became the colonizers, and uh, then uh, UK, British came back again. So they have both languages, English and French. French. Now, in this sub Sahel region, in Sahel region, the language is French. Okay. And it has been the most coup uh, oriented, is not the word, most continuous, well, max, ma maximum coups have taken place. Mm -hmm. This place, Niger itself, has had in the last three years seven coups. Mm. It's quite strange. Uh, and then there has been coup in the neighbors, Burkina Faso. Uh, it has got a 70, 35 years old kid, captain, who did the coup just a little while ago. And then there is uh, Mali, same mm. thing. So this is coup region. Mm. And the second thing here is that Obama bin Laden had the maximum impact in this region. Okay. So it was a terrorist factory. Mm -hmm. It was a terrorist factory. And, and the West has set up its uh, control systems, including in Niger. USA set up its base, mm. uh, $100 million, yes, they, they spent on it. And they spent $55 million per year for its operating maintenance. Okay. And there are 1,000 people. Mm. What are they doing there? Do they have any economic interest? No. Military or political interest? Well, political interest also must mean something, no? Mm -hmm. But French had, because French were taking this uranium. You interrupted me at that time, yellow cake. Mm. Yellow cake is uranium. Mm. So, largest factory the French have of converting this. And, and as you know, 74% of electricity in France is, is, is nuclear energy. So, they consume themselves a lot. And then they become traders. Now, one small angle I'll just mention here, that if Russia's influence is uh, there, and we will explain how it is there, why it is there. Then, Rosatom, the Russian company, which is already number one, will become the monopolist in uranium, uranium in the world. Okay. If this uranium comes under their charge. Hmm. Though they have not taken Panga. They are just um, hmm. uh, watching it. Watching. Hmm. And in that watching, what has happened is that... Wait and watch. Um, while, while those three coups were there before that, hmm. But the fourth one was a democratic election in which 99.9% .9 votes were received by this person who is under arrest now. 99%, 99.9% mm -hmm. only. I don't know why he didn't get bond with one person also. <laughs> which means you can expect probability is high that it is a mm. made-up election. But anyway, he came. Mm. People are very unhappy. Mm. Now, in places like this, now this is 25 million people, mm. very poor. You have one major resource that you are the seventh largest supplier of uranium in the world. Right. You meaning that one company, hmm. French company. Okay. So, uh, so there must have been something. There was there was a lot of disenchantment among the public hmm. in terms of what was happening. Them no new school, no nothing. The uranium is not hmm. Right. We have resources then, and, and uranium is very very expensive. Right. <laughs> so, in any case, this was first palace guards of, of, of the president hmm. who did the coup. Now, when did they do the coup? That is when we were discussing when the Africa summit was going on hmm. in Russia last week. Okay, okay. Got it? Now, we'll come hmm. to the next, next points. Uh, then, uh, then the rest of the army also joined them. Now, they're a joint group. It's not hmm. palace guard. As this has happened, two, three things happened. Europe uh, gave warnings. USA gave warnings. Mm. USA has a base also. And then ECOWAS gave the warning. What is ECOWAS? It is the Economic uh, Organization of West African States. Mm. 15 countries. ECOWAS has a role to play? I'm coming. Okay. So ECOWAS were also represented in the Russian uh, summit. Mm. Um, so ECOWAS uh, did the following. In three steps they went. First, they requested, no, please reinstate him. Then they said, next five days, if you don't reinstate, we might take action. Mm. Then they reverse, reverted to say, it's not a question, action means we will sit down and talk peace and all that. 
yesterday was the last day for the ultimatum hmm. okay now finally in parallel what's happening in parallel russia is giving warning uh, sorry uh, us is giving warning blinken secretary of state also went to hmm. niger and indirectly met eco was with hmm. french of course uh, first of all uh, evacuated the, the staff and all that mm. that the factory evacuated the staff and all that and italy had something italy had also some interest there um, uh, they evacuated and then they said that if uh, you don't reinstate that guy mm. huh, and we will we might do military attack now now what happens this area let's remember is is, is a belt where terrorism production is one of the main activities mm-hmm. one of the main economic activities also and then they go to sudan and other places other places mm-hmm. fourth point fourth point is that this group invited wagner okay the one which is taken over we are by now sawal lo wo bhi apne pure agreement karta hai ye factory mein ko de dunga ye copper mein ko de dunga ye to tab aata hai wo so wagner has gone now wagner has gone is a company no Hmm. Now, now immediately, Western media will say the Russia has got uh, done. What has Russia done? Who should be cooker or what? Or or whatever relationship is there? But yes, they would have talked to Russia. Please help us if these guys all attack us, and they want to attack us for what? To get the uranium. Hmm. uranium. Okay. Or other resources. Ha, uranium is the main. Well, you don't care that that we will improve the education and we will improve hmm. the health and all that. Don't do such a thing, na. Okay, now therefore these are all those parties have got together. So somebody asked the question: Why doesn't uh, in India go and um, create a peace plan? Hmm. The answer to that was no. That will be uh, unwise because India has a very good image. Hmm. Uh, maybe after whoever comes, we, we work with them, but we should not take any side. We don't know enough about it. And what about BRICS nation? Because... Okay, I come to that. I come hmm. to that. Now. A third activity which parallel took place last two days mm. is the meeting uh, which Saudi Arabia called mm. uh, for um, create, some... uh, for creating a peace plan mm. for uh, Ukraine. Mm. So they invited Zelensky. Mm. They invited all the other heads of state. No heads of state came, mm. uh, and India was represented by um, our Mr. Doval, Doval, National Security, mm. uh, right, and so on. So it seems nothing much has happened. The same song. It mm. is Ukraine's the ten-piece plan, which first first item is that uh, let them get out mm. uh, wherever they were before two two thousand four. Mm. You cannot able to defeat somebody militarily. Okay, so if you go to the money, you have so much money, how much money is there? Go and ask him. Tell him, na. He will say that you are not a member. Don't say that you are not a member. You are a member. If you are a member, then I will give you your money. Right? Okay. <laughs> so let's say consciously what is happening here. Uh, and 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 that is mostly BRIC nations which went there. Hmm. And actually, it looks like it is stated also, hypothesized also that U.S. asked Saudi Arabia to somehow mollify the BRICS people because BRICS people are not taking a stand of anti-Russia; they are remaining neutral. Hmm. And this forty bunch of people is quite large. Now, the Brazilian president came, who is also active in BRICS now. Hmm. He's a leftist guy, right? In between, he was um, first after his first term, he was in jail. Mm-hmm. Bolsonaro had put him, the new president had put him in jail. Mm. Now he got out from there. Next election, he won again. And the lady whom he had kept in charge as the president there for some time is the president of the National Development Bank of mm-hmm. BRICS. Okay, <clears throat> so so this is the global connections. Okay. So now Lula, his name is Lula. Lula said nothing doing. You cannot make or take one side. Mm. Uh, whatever has been done bad to the ethnic um, Russian there. Mm. Uh, that is why Russia had to enter. So now you ensure that nothing happened to them. And if you want to make him NATO member, then thank you very much. Mm. So he he what a move for Tajmi. This is communist socialist sort of move for Tajmi. But when he gets there, whether we will gain or lose. Right. So that is about this one. Okay, then somebody said that, you know, Africa summit took place. Hmm. The next door neighbors of Niger, Burkina Faso, and and, and Mali, hmm. both those guys got up there and said a lot of things positive to Russia and a lot of things negative to West, saying hmm. these these guys continue to exploit us. 
They are still colonies. Their companies are colonies. Okay? And um, uh, our, uh, our society does not develop at all. Hmm. And one of us comes and he also takes some money and then uh, second comes. So when these fellows do coup, and this one Burkina Faso is um, a 35-year-old guy. Hmm. He says, now we are different. We have realized what our mistakes are there. Let them touch Niger. And we'll show them. Look, it's like these people have come through struggles. Right. So, around that, three, four countries of Niger, hmm. they have openly said, let them come and we'll give them a fight. Hmm. Let them come. Let, let USA send us. Now, I'm going to be in the basis of the hmm. Right? So, now, what, what is that? The eco was uh, ultimatum till yesterday. That's over. They have not been able to do anything. Hmm. Because now that group which is there, if they if they if they put up their military hmm. into it, and these guys, younger guys, a lot of gusto. Ah, they have a lot of rigor, vigor. <laughs> oh, they have a lot of rigor, hmm. they have taken taken a lot of bullets earlier. Hmm. And supposing they defeat them, will you keep on sending your army only? We are with this guy. Now, how is it with this guy? 25 million people in the country. Hmm. There was a protest yesterday in favor of the current regime. Okay. Six lakh people. Hmm. Reported six lakh people. Could be two lakh, one lakh, I don't know. Hmm. But it is in lakhs. Which means the people are with them. People are with them. The color election are too. Hmm. Unfortunately, what has happened is because of the impact of the France also is that whenever this change has taken place, they have changed the constitution also and there is a new republic. So, every republic mm. is there for six months, something like mm. that. Now, summing it up. Summing it up, these are the birth pangs or last pangs of colonialism. Mm. Not birth pangs of colonialism, financial capitalism. And, um, and earlier they used to manage, you know, this West gets together and, you know, their military base is there with 1,000 people with fancy weapons mm -hmm. and planes and all that, and drones and all that, they would have crushed them. But when it becomes a geopolitical event, you can't do it. Otherwise, we won't have known what is Niger, where it is, what has happened to one man has come, second man has gone, mm -hmm. nothing. So, linking it up, therefore, this question of multi and unipolarism is the thing around which we hang. It's the crux. Right? Okay. We hang, bang, we hang things. Mm -hmm. That this is again about multipolarism. Mm -hmm. They have a surety of interest from China that they will invest. Mm -hmm. Make money, but not be that exploitative. The earlier model was you just make everything. By the way, there's a lot of gold also. So that gold, hundred percent goes to uh, France. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go to the market. Okay. And similarly, it's diamonds, you know, this one company, DBS, which controls all the diamond output wherever, mm. right? They are the ones who decide how many diamonds we will release and how much price we will keep and mm. so on. And they give those, are called sightings. Some people can go and watch them and say it's in America. Mm. He must make a discussion. So that's diamond market. Right? So this is, this is gold. Why then it is bricks? Because the summit which is going to take place. The US and Europe is working very hard, hard at them that they should not attend. Hmm. Okay. Yesterday they have seen that Unki Baat Kisi Ne Suni Nahi Hai. They said, Thik hai, let Zelensky keep on saying what he wants. Hmm. Let him go and defeat them. So, somewhere down the line, they have understood that they are rich in resources. So, that's why the whole world is looking to them and they have stood for their. Exactly. Own. It has been very unfortunate in the case of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, they were not exposed to other civilizations. We talked about mm -hmm. four and five years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, some people come and they had the guns and they didn't have the guns. And, and you are literally captured like an animal. Mm -hmm. Take them away. Then your reproduction rights are defined in a very different fashion. Because they didn't use to take women because you don't want to spend too much time on that. They mm -hmm. 
so how do they reproduce because these many slaves you want for casting mm. and then you let them reproduce also uh, etc etc so there was no development there mm. and um, the resources got found but they didn't have modern technology to exploit them and um, these colonialists if you go to their history even written by themselves uh, they were extremely exploited Hmm. So leave aside some old civilization like like Egypt hmm, or Ethiopia also. Ethiopia also later on the western countries uh, divided up in Eritrea and rest of Ethiopia hmm. because of oil in Eritrea. So they are now it's owned by all the oil companies. Iran hmm. they did the same thing because they brought the Shah Pahlavi because the earlier <coughs> prime minister had nationalized the industry. Killed him, and mm. uh, so Shah. After Shah, because he was so different, actually, smartness in the newspapers, but very, very tough dictator. So the Ayatollahs had to take care of him. As far as Saudi Arabia was concerned, and then the rest of the Persian Gulf, saying they said we will protect you, but you will deal only in dollars. So petrodollar became the currency of the world, actually, mm. because of that. Uh, it continues. And they have their bases there. So this, this bases are there, but actually they are all paid for by the local guys. Hmm. And this is like sending you my security team. You know. Exactly. And then you pay. Uh, directly you don't pay, then you pay three hundred and ten dollars, uh, ten billion dollars, like Australia for one submarine. Hmm. So. So the point is that this, this 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 colonialism though ended. For example, in this case, France uh, gave them independence. And there was an independence movement. A lot of people died. Mm. Uh, they didn't give them free and um, kept all the resources in their hands. And to, today, they're saying finally, by Marco, mm -hmm. uh, So there were these major actors, uh, Patrick Lumumba in the fifties, uh, got killed. Uh, the Nukuruma. Uh, so in these bigger countries there, uh, Kenya and so on, these movements were there. Gandhiji had a movement in South Africa, South mm -hmm. Africa, from which came the African National Congress, which is mm -hmm. which is the only one which has been a stable political party for all these years. Mm -hmm. This was set up partly in responsibility of Gandhiji. He was a lawyer, and um, so 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 therefore uh, India has participated in the liberation struggle. Right. Very consistently during Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru's time also, very consistently they were supported with whatever things want to do it. So hence they have very good image. Russia, as I told you, supported them in the large industries, you know, dams mm. and uh, so on. Now BRI project, um, China is supporting with mm. infrastructure and all that. We they keep on criticizing. But you really look at the numbers; it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so all the major infrastructure is being funded by them. So now the other side of the story is, you look at the World Bank there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you look at directly the uh, USA and, and Europe. How much money have they spent in infrastructure in the last 10, 20 years? Right. Which means they're not interested in the mm -hmm. country development. They are in, China is interested in the industrial development, also new ports, etc., etc., so that they have clear things for coming and going. Going. Uh, and you're re realizing the potential, one billion people. Mm. Uh, they're not less hard working that way. They have, mm. They're not studied, the, the exposure is poor. And uh, they have woken up. I mean, media has had. There are lots of channels which which, has... which, which talk about the dukhra. Mm. And they are normally good at the music, anyway, natural. Mm. Uh, and whatever, whatever I've been able to see earlier, I had not seen Sub Saharan mm. TV or. Sahel TV or mm. something, you can see the you can see the pain coming out. It is a pain, real pain. Mm. So if it, it is there and they realize it and then there are other people to support. This is where this geopolitics. Mm. Okay. You guys are going to come and bother me because you think you're too strong and you have no business here to do anything. Mm. This is internal matter. This is the president of the internal matter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We support democratic values and so on and so forth. But at high schools to Africa, in Africa, in 10 years. 28 schools. Okay. 
So what are you talking? You have no interest in one party or the other, but we have. Hmm. We know what's not happening. That's why we are doing this. You killed our Patrick Lumumba also. He, it became almost like the whole of Africa. Okay. We fought for their independence, fought for democracy, and so on. But he was. So let's man. wrap up. Uh, yeah. yeah. You want to add something? Okay. No. In this, mm. um, therefore, therefore, what we say is that we should keep our ears and eyes open mm. because markets can change. Right. Um, if uranium is not available and and we are not able to get it, for mm. example, right? Our power production will be affected, mm. or the cost will be affected. And power cost, if it increases, your manufacturing cost. Everything gets affected. Everything gets affected, right? So you have to, as a country, make sure that you're uh, de-risking of the things, but you also have to see the geopolitical limits. Right. And geopolitical limit is such that our general knowledge is so poor that we don't even know, didn't even know there is a high region. Is the Niger, and that it produces so much grain. Hmm? And that is where the uh, thing is there about understanding of it. Hmm. Similarly, you know what's happening to the trade broadly speaking, hmm? and uh, therefore, what's the impact going to be asked? Simple concept like China plus one, therefore, I'm automatically one. Also, does not work, hmm. right? Uh, because will we be able to compete with them at their manufacturing costs? Uh, <laughs> so, so, and sometimes uh, the problems can come near home. Mm. For example, Pakistan, flood first. Now, uh, Imran Khan in jail. Right. Now, this is therefore record of Pakistan and of any country that every prime minister elected there has been charged Imprisoned. with corruption. <laughs> has been, no, has been charged with corruption. <laughs> in prison. Mm. And then Bhutto, his daughter, etc., etc., assassinated. Mm. Right. So democracy ki baat karte, democracy ki banana itna asaan nahi hota. Hmm. We don't realize, we don't cherish the democracy, democracy. And, and the freedom we have. So next door also there will be instability. We'll be discussing about this Pakistan issue and Imran Khan's arrest in our next episode. That is uh, GPET uh, episode 6. We'll be talking about all these issues. So here we wrap up. That Niger issue is not only the issue of Sahel region. It's a universal or I would say a global issue, which is going to impact the countries at large. And if we are not able to get access to those uraniums, it's going to impact our power generation, which is going to affect economy at a large. And India stands so far is well appreciated because we have good relations with India. So India must continue the way it is continuing. So thank you. Thank you.